if you've been so used to interacting with so many people that you know and don't know in this barrier driven world where you don't have to ever look them in the eye or ever talk to them one to one, now you get your first job and they're like, here's a phone, call people and ask them about stuff. And you're like, what? What if they say no? What if they're not interested? Right? The number one reason that people have call reluctance is because they're not used to calling strangers. My name's Mike Lander, and you're listening to Higgle, the B2B Sales Club podcast, where we bring you actionable insights about sales RFPs, negotiations, and difficult procurement discussions from sales leaders, brand leaders, and procurement leaders. Please subscribe to get updates when new episodes are released. Kevin, thanks ever so much for joining me on Higgle, the B2B Sales Club podcast. Oh, thanks, Mike. I uh, I appreciate it. I, we, we, we rescheduled this a few times, but I'm glad we yeah. were able to connect here and it's going to be a really good conversation. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, I think it's because we're both obviously very client-facing, very sales-oriented. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, prospecting meetings and client meetings have, uh, have got in the way, but we've now got a time, which is fantastic. So um, I guess the first thing is explain to the audience who you are, what you do, and something unusual about yourself. For sure, for sure. Let's start there. Good place to start. Um, my name is Kevin Hopp. I'm an outbound sales consultant and trainer. I work almost exclusively in the B2B technology space. But you know, recently I've been picking up clients in other areas too because phone is relevant everywhere. I teach a phone-led approach. If you look at my shirt, I have a shirt that has a dude holding a phone on it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm one of the I'm one of LinkedIn and the internet's biggest cold calling geeks, I would say. Uh, that's one thing about myself. But if you want to know something that's really unique about yep. Kevin Hopp, that is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not one in a million, but it's close. I was born with three thumbs. Wow. So I have two thumbs right here, but on this yep. thumb, on my, my left thumb, I had another fully functioning. Wow. Thumb. Yeah, it's called polydactility and it's the rarest form. So the, the polydactility is Fairly common, people have extra toes or a little nub on the on the side of yep. where their pinky toe was. The rarest form of polydactility is to have an extra fully functioning opposable thumb. Now, wow. that's that's half of my weird fact. The second half of the weird fact is I was born with three thumbs. I then, you know, fast forward uh, how old was I? Twenty four years, and I meet my wife, and uh, we start dating, and through the course of dating, I find out what she does for a living and what her father does for a living. Yep. We then get married. My wife is a pediatric occupational hand therapist, which is the only kind of OT I've ever done because I had to have hand therapy after my surgery. Yeah. She does OT for this sort of surgery. And her father is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon that does this surgery among many others. Wow. how I, I didn't pick her that way. Okay, I picked her because I thought she was cute. I picked her because I thought she'd be a good time to hang out with. And here we are. I've got so much uh, thumb stuff in my life. Exactly. Now, her fa- did her father operate on you or not? No, that would be no, that would be really coincidental. That would be that'd be Freaky Friday. No, but but the yep. first time I met him, he looked at my hand and he told me by looking at my scar and the way that it was done, he told yeah. me exactly when I had it done. Wow. He's like, he's like, oh, you had this done in 1992, 1993. I'm like, how'd you know? He's like, we don't do it this way. He's like, the science has gotten better. When I did, I did one, you know, three years ago, I did it very different than this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. well, there you go. It doesn't seem to have hindered you at all, Kevin, which is good. Yeah, no, no. no. I mean, people, <laughs> people will know me for literally years. Yeah. I've had friends that I hang out with for years. And one day they look at my thumb and they go, what's wrong? What, what happened there, man? Yeah, I'm like exactly. Dude, I'm four three thumbs. My fun fact. <laughs> so moving on from the fun facts into sales cold calling. So um, in the prep call, we talked about kind of three broad kind of topics, and then we'll do a wrap up. So I think first of all, uh, so I obviously like you. I work with an awful lot of salespeople in marketing agencies, consultancies, all sorts of different practices, mainly kind of marketing agencies. Um, and a lot of people say, "Oh, cold calling is dead." So is cold calling dead? Is that a myth or a reality, Kevin? I'm going to go with myth. Um, And uh, there's there's two schools of thought here that they see on LinkedIn. And I think the first school of thought is the 
the old school approach of it's not dead. You just need to try harder. Ah, pick up the phone. Yeah, <laughs> get after it today, guys. And this like rah rah mentality that works really, really well from uh, you know, nineteen eighty up until about two thousand and nine. This rah, Do you remember rah Glenn mentality. Gary, Glenn Ross? Have you yeah, ever seen yeah, Glenn yeah. Gary Glenn Ross? Exactly. This is a Glenn Gary movie, you know? Yeah, correct. Yeah. These yeah, are closers. Are closed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so th- that that old school mentality around cold calling's not dead. You just need to do more of it. Right that doesn't really work anymore. And yeah. there's a re- really practical reason, right? And everyone listening to this show, you understand why that doesn't work, right? Because yeah. Connect rates and pickup rates have never been lower. And that Correct. is going to continue. That trend is only going to get worse over time. Yeah. So my Which is my also linked, part- Kevin, by the way. So that's linked yeah. to because scamming has increased dramatically. And so people oh, yeah. are fearful now of picking up the phone because it's likely to be a scam. So you don't pick up the phone to unknown numbers. That's right. That's right. And, you know, Apple and Android have settings where your phone, if you call somebody and you're not in their address book, it'll just go straight to voicemail. So right. things like that, the, the phone carriers are working against us. Everything's working against yep. you. So like my two part answer to you, to be honest, is cold calling is not dead, but you need to do it in a modern way in order to okay. have success with cold calling. The old school method of like picking up a phone and punching 10 digits in, yep. waiting for it to right. ring. That I believe is is going away, and if you're doing that all day, and there's somebody listening to this show right now that is doing that, yeah, my heart's with you. My heart yeah, is with yeah. you. But there is a better have way. They'll have an auto outbound dialer, and they're yeah. sat there just hitting the phones. So, if that's the old school way and it doesn't work, what's the new yeah. school way that has a better success rate? So you mentioned it a little bit already, but there there are so many different dialing technology platforms out there. They're becoming very affordable, which is good. There, there's a lot of um, competition in the dialer market now, which is yep. good for the consumer. It's good for the everyday rep. Uh, there's three tiers to the auto dialing market. I can go over this really quickly. So the, the top tier are going to be these like gold standard dialers, which are agent assisted. That means these platforms, when you log in and you hit go and you're calling a list, you're actually paying for a call center agent somewhere else in the world to do your cold calling for you and live connect you to the right person. It's like salesperson crack, okay? It's like crack cocaine. It's so easy. It's so good. It's also cumbersome to implement. It's also expensive, very cost prohibitive for many organizations. The middle tier of the market is the, the the tier that's really exploding right now, and that's the parallel dialing space. That's the idea that you don't need to call one number, listen to it go ring, 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 leave a voicemail, hang up, and call the next one. I can call three people at once, and there's an AI bot listening into every call, and it's going to wait until they hear a live human. So if it starts... Hey, you've reached Mike, leave a uh, beep at the voicemail or, you know, voicemail the beep, whatever. It's going to automatically either drop a voicemail if you want to tell it to do that, or it's just going to hang up that call and call somebody else. Right. So you get this massive efficiency. You're calling three to four times as many people as you would have in a, in a window. Yep. So you get to that conversation three to four times faster, right? So the parallel dialing market's the middle tier of the market. It's exploding. It's awesome. The bottom tier is your traditional power dialers. That is calling one number and without you having to press a button, another number gets called right after that. Exactly. It, those, those tools are very cheap. They're easy to bolt on to kind of whatever software you have. It's better than calling hand by hand, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Pun- punching yeah. just at a time. But this, because this middle tier of the market starting to explode, um, there's not really an excuse for not using parallel. Like if you're actually serious about cold calling, you should be investing in a parallel dialer. I mean, we're talking, they're, they're doing deals, you know, 200 bucks a month, all you can dial. Wow. Unlimited dialing. And it's parallel, wow. so you're not listening to the phone ring. It's a yep. nice experience. Reps are going to get anywhere from like six to 10 conversations an hour. Like, wow. It's real. So yeah, yeah. you should be using tech. Okay, perfect. So, which brings us on nicely to the next kind of problem, I guess, or question that we discussed, which is, so why do salespeople find it so hard to pick up the phone to strangers? 
So now we know about the tech, about parallel dialing. We've taken away the fear of picking up the phone and dialing the number. That's kind of all gone. But yeah. you've now got a live human being that a salesperson is about to engage with. And that's anxiety inducing for many people. So yes. why is that? What creates that kind of anxiety? Why don't we like it as human beings? Well, there's a generational component to it, which I think right? is like an interesting thing and something that like you should talk about. I'm a millennial. And believe it or not, that's why I get hired a lot as a consultant and trainer. You know, people, people my age who are, you know, salespeople at companies say like, well, how can you be a consultant? You haven't like sold a big company or da, da, da. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a millennial and I teach a millennial Gen Z friendly way of hitting the phones. Right. And, you know, Gen X and boomers, which are the people who are controlling the purse strings at these companies, they yep. look at me and they say, oh. This is a this is a methodology that will actually get my reps that are young, you know, they're thirty two and below, thirty five and below. Yeah, they're actually going to use this methodology to have more conversations. So there's a generational component that more and more uh, people are are born into these worlds with technology where they don't have to pick up the phone and call people. Right, um, my mom and dad's generation, like all they had was phone. Yeah. And every time the phone rang, you picked it up because you didn't know who was on the other end of the line. Correct. Because there was no caller ID the at the time. Yes. So even right. then, your your friends and family weren't actually in your phone as caller ID. Now we have caller right. ID, which is much better. That's right. So the the real point of me explaining all this background of like the fact that there are differences da, 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 is in these newer generations, millennials, Gen Z, your ego was always protected by this barrier, right? If I'm on Instagram or if I'm on TikTok or if I'm anywhere, my ego is one to two steps away from actually having to look a person in the eye yeah. and make a judgment call about anything that's going on in the situation. Now, that concept is why people don't like picking up the phone. Because when you pick up the phone, you're having the you know, the yeah. well, chutzpah, the balls to call somebody and ask them something that they didn't ask for. They're like, you're going to call them? They didn't ask for you to call them? Yeah. Wow, you're you got a lot of... You're interrupting that day. Right? You're interrupting their day. And if you've, you've been so used to interacting with so many people that you know and don't know in this, you know, barrier-driven world where you don't have to ever look them in the eye or ever talk to them one-to-one... -one, now you get your first job and they're like, here's a phone, call people and ask them about stuff. And you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What if they say no? Exactly. What if they're not interested? <laughs> right? And, and I think it just be, it's like the number one reason that people have call reluctance is because they're not used to calling strangers. Right? Yeah. So, so this also, the, the second half of this, I would say that if you are somebody that, you know, talks to strangers a lot, is naturally kind of a talkative person, me, right? Like yep. my wife always rolls her eyes because my wife and I are uh, yin and yang, right? She's the yeah, opposite. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very outgoing. She's very introverted. I make friends in the security line at the airport, man. Every bar I've yeah. ever been to, I walk out with a new best friend. Things like that, right? If you're that kind of person, you can make a killing in sales because so few people naturally have that outgoing tendency. And it's that ability to put yourself on the line, to put your ego on the line and reach out to someone and try to make a, a, a cold connection. That is the rare skill, I would argue. So, um, do you want to do an experiment, Kevin? <laughs> so, sure. Shall well, we try sure. a well, cold call uh, experiment where you're the caller and I'm the receiver? Um, and sure. then let's unpack it afterwards about what's the kind of methodology that anyone can try. What I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to get people in the audience that are listening to go, yeah, that's easy. I could try that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I could do that. We could do a, we could do a before and after, right? So I'll, yeah. I will call you as a sales rep who is trying to sell you something at, at Piscari, right? Yep. And I'm going to do it the way that most people are cold calling the way that most sales managers that haven't picked up the phone in 15 years are telling them to cold call. Yep. We're going to use that talk track and then we'll use the talk track that I teach. Ready? This will be hysterical. Excellent. And bear in mind, Kevin, 
I'm an ex-procurement director. So I'm an ex-buyer. <laughs> <laughs> Professional buyer, huh? Yeah. So there we go. Uh, I love it. All right, you ready? Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, uh, I was looking for Mike. Who is this? Yeah, my name's Kevin. I- I'm actually with uh, Acme Incorporated. We're the number uh, one. B- not, B- not interested. Not interested. No, too busy. Well, Bye, Mike. Mike, we're, we're number one. We Gar- Gartner Magic but- Quadrant. Bye. I love you. I love you. Bzzz- Bzzz- Man, that's 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 unbelievable. I can't believe that even though I had the number one software, you didn't want to look at it. Correct. Not interested. Don't care. You've interrupted my day. <sighs> that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> now, I, I, let, let me say this: that you you had this very abrupt, you know, uh, you had downtone when you answered. Yeah, and then you immediately said no. I would actually classify someone who's that quick on the no as what I call not a phone lead. Right. I don't want to call you back. Yeah, I'll exactly. find other ways to get in touch with Mike. Yeah. But life, life is too short to deal with people like that, to call them yeah, back yeah. again and again. Because the law of numbers, there's going to be other people that are open to a conversation. Exactly. So the next one, I'll be slightly more open. I love it. I love it. You ready? You ready? Let's, let's yeah. do it uh, Kevin Hopp style. Yeah. Ring, ring. Hello? Hello? Hey, uh, I was looking for Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Mike. Fantastic, Mike. Look, I know I'm catching you out of the blue here. My name's Kevin Hop. I'm with Acme Incorporated. Are you heads down doing something else? Or you got one minute, and I can tell you exactly why I called. Uh, I was a bit busy, but I can probably spend a minute. Okay. Awesome. One minute. Start the timer. <laughs> okay. Mike. Reason I'm reaching out, I work with people just like you every day to help them solve challenges in their business. We do this by implementing Acme. Now, let me ask you a question about your business. When it comes to this process in particular, are you guys doing this or are you doing that? So we've got an existing system. It's been in place for about seven or eight years. It's kind of clunky, but it kind of works. So we weren't thinking of changing. I totally get it. Look, I mean, if you were thinking about changing, you probably would have called me, Mike. Yeah. But, you know, what's interesting is a lot of our best customers were using that system and they found that one of the challenges they had was integrations in the evolution of the platform. That that company's been around for a long time, which is great, but we're actually a new player in the space. We're coming at this challenge from a bit of a different angle. Would you be open-minded to learning about how we're different? Yeah, as long as you're not trying to sell something, happy to learn, yeah. happy to learn. Yeah, of course. Hey, Mike, I give away things for a living. That's what I do. Isn't that <laughs> what you do? You give away everything for a living, right? <laughs> now, so, so Mike, I'll be honest with you. That our Acme does cost money, but the point of our conversation that we're going to schedule here for later this week is not to take your money from you, but rather to learn a little bit more about your business to see if what we do at Acme could solve problems for you. And if it doesn't, you walk away learning more, and I walk away knowing that I can go help somebody else. Okay. How does uh, Friday at 1 o'clock work for you? Yeah, that's good, actually. Yeah, okay. Done. All right. See you then. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go. Meeting book. Better. A lot better. Better. A lot different. Exactly. A lot different. So just unpack that for us, Kevin. What's the kind of, um, what's the a consistent method? that's really easy to like kind of remember that helps people to reduce anxiety and get on the phone. For sure. So the first thing I want people to think about in that last call, did I sound like a sales rep at a software company? No. Or did I sound like kind of how Kevin Hopp talks? Exactly. Sounded very relaxed, right? A big part of my methodology is before we make a cold call, We have a script. The script is not something that you need to read word for word every single time because, of course, people normally don't talk like that. But the script is going to help me stay in a linear progression through the call. That's why scripting is important. It's not important to read every word. It's important that you get on a track and you stay on a track. The point of the cold call is to have a purpose-driven conversation. Now, the second thing that I want people to notice about that call, it was about I talked a little bit about Acme 
and, and, and you know, my solution and what we do, I put it into context for you right away for the prospect. And yep. then I, I, I flipped the script and said, tell me about your business. And I asked you a very specific question about a specific process that you're using. Yep. Now, this is what I call getting into a topic-driven conversation. Right? Yeah. If you think about the first cold call, what most reps do is they lead with what I would call advertising. Right? Exactly. Hey, what's up? I'm calling with Acme. We're the number one solution. And, da, 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 and I'd love to get 20 minutes to show you how it works. And who wants to watch? Advertising? Yeah. Who wants this what? job that's these days? Yeah. Yeah. The, the problem with advertising is it's so in, impersonal. It's not, it's not personalized to me. It makes no yeah. sense in my world. Right? Correct. So at the core of my methodology is what I call business conversations. You should be able to call someone in your market and have a conversation about their business to understand if there are opportunities for you to help them. And of course, what ends up coming up in, this, in these calls and inevitably somebody listening to this is going to say, well, I don't know enough about their business. And I, I, what, what if they say they're all good? And what if they say it's all, you know, you had an existing solution. Everybody yeah. has solutions to problems and, you know, against this goes against the old school thought, but. Not everybody's walking around in pain. Yeah, right? exactly. A lot of old school trainers. When I got when I, when I was a rep, I was taught to look for pain, find the pain. They're in pain, and then you go make a few thousand cold calls. You talk to people. You're like, damn, people are generally not in pain, walking around exactly. with half an arm sticking out. They they actually think that what they have is great. So my close, my first close, if you heard it, was, are you open minded to hearing about how we're doing this differently? That's not, hey, I want to I want to get you on a sales demo. Yeah. Those are triggering words for people, right? Particularly procurement directors. You guys understand what a sales demo is. Yeah. You got to that eventually, right? You did bring up the point of like, hey, I'm not looking to buy anything. Yeah. Point of a cold call, like you shouldn't be cold calling people unless your problem is you need to talk to more people in your market. Does that make sense? Like, I say that I, again. I'm, the, the point of a cold call, like you should be cold calling if you need to talk to more people in your market. So it's a concept that I call going from zero to one, right? So let's say I'm Acme Incorporated and you're Piscari. Right yep. now, the reason I would cold call you is no one at Acme Incorporated is talking to and has a direct line of communication to anyone at Piscari. So yeah, we cold exactly. call, so we get into an open-minded conversation. Then when we follow up, when the account executive sends a follow-up email, when all this stuff happens, there's an actual amount of trust and respect in that communication. Exactly. <clears throat> so we actually learn things. Yeah. As and something else, Kevin. So, yeah. so something else that, uh, and, and this, this will be very familiar to you, um, but <clears throat> as you say, that there is no, people aren't walking around in pain all the time because if they were, they'd go off and solve the problem. They'd talk to a doctor and they'd solve the problem. Um, but when a problem comes up, what I used to do is obviously now in my old buyer's role, I'm now looking for five suppliers. So I need to contact five suppliers to get them to yeah. bid for my piece of work. Well, mm -hmm. out of the five, one's the incumbent, one's someone we worked with before, one's someone that's recommended, two are unknowns, but we have some kind of contact normally. Well, if you could be the one where we've had a contact with you and had a conversation with you and there's been yes. a few follow-ups and you sent me some thought leadership and I've been to a breakfast, you're much more likely to be in with a shout than the last person who is, I don't know who you are, we've never worked with your company, never talked to a rep, but you're on the list because you qualified on a web-based search. Your yes. chance of winning off a web-based search with no contact and relationship is a bit bigger than zero, but not much. Right. So you use, you use the R word there. And this is like a, it's a, it, it's a triggering word for me because when I was a sales rep and before I got a consulting for five years, I carried it back. Right. So I have right. been a sales rep, although I am a young consultant and trainer. Uh, the, the thing that I heard again and again is sales is about relationships. Right. And I used to sit there at 25, 26 years old and say, well, fuck, I don't have any relationships. Exactly. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know? Precisely. I How do I hit quota? I on, How am I going to hit quota? <laughs> I got hired at a company where I was part of a team of account executives. I was 27 years old. The next closest guy on that team, 37 years old. 
yeah, yeah. The oldest was 48. Right. And guess what they had? Relationships. Yeah, yeah. So a big reason why teams like my methodology is it turns their reps into little business people having business conversations. And if right. you can have a business conversation with somebody, that's when you start to build trust. Yeah. And we follow up. One of the magical things I teach is follow up. And when you follow up, we're going to build that relationship. And that's how yeah. you start to build your Rolodex. So it's, it's, it's the, the very zero to one of, of starting that snowball down the hill. We got to start by packing the snowball, then put it on the ground. And, you know, so cold calling is that hard part. But if you take the pressure off of, I'm not calling to get Mike to buy my stuff. Correct. Today. I'm calling to have a conversation about his business and see if we could schedule a time to then explore that. To then exploit, to then explore, and that's, that's the key. Help. Correct. So, can we just talk? Just give us a quick summary of um, what's the kind of ABC of that method. The first thing you do, the second thing you do, the third thing you do. Uh, so, the first thing that you want to do with a cold call is be relaxed, right? The the thing that you know, I, I always tell reps if they have an Apple Watch, I'm like, tell me what your heart rate is right now. Right. If it's over 90 beats per minute, we're not making a call. Yeah, yeah. Relax. The key to relaxing is going into the situation, understanding what can happen. So one of the first things I do when I get reps, I, I, we get the get their the dialer set up. We got their sales lead list, everything. And I say, hey, look at that list. Nobody on that list is interested. If they were, they would have called you. Yeah. Now let's go have curious conversations with them. Here's your script, right? right. So part one is relax, and that 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 comes from having a plan. Have yeah. a plan, have a structure to the way that you're going to go do this. Part yeah. two is follow a script. Now, following a script is not reading a script word for word, but it no. is being able to track in a linear motion through a conversation. Because conversations go all over. We know that. But the difference between a sales conversation and a normal conversation with your mates is we have a point that we're trying to get across. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say is you need to have a point of view. Exactly. Point of view. You have to have an opinion yeah. on something in someone's business, right? Yeah. That all comes from the, the, the script. And then the third thing I would say is to take the pressure off of the demo and make the close a conversation. The next meeting. Exactly. The next meeting. It's just we're going from zero to one. We're going yeah. from I am not talking to anybody at Piscari about anything do I have a scheduled meeting where this person's going to show up and we're, we don't have any pressure of it being a cold call? We have no pressure of a proposal in front of them. We're Correct. having an open-minded conversation about their business. So exactly I, right. I think those, those three, if you, if, you, uh, if you institute that, you're going to have a good time. Relax, have a point of view on a business issue that they care about, and then the only action is book another conversation. Yeah, close, close, close for conversations, not for demos. Brilliant. Kevin, so um, I was going to ask you three practical tips to improve sales strategy. You've just given them, which is perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just as a kind of like a drawing it all together, because we run for about 30 minutes, as you know, kind of uh, across all of the companies you've worked with and all of the kind of salespeople you've worked with, if someone is sat on the in their car and they're maybe all the way back from taking the kids to school, which is what I do, listen to a lot of podcasts when I do that, um, is um, they may be like a commercial director, a sales director, and they're going, I've got 10 salespeople. We need to do more outbounds. We've now got a bit of a method for doing it. Sounds great. But where did they kind of start? Where, where would a sales director start the journey of getting into, apart from calling you, clearly? <laughs> yeah, what would their first kind of stats be? So... One of the one of the classic misnomers about outbound that kind of gets a lot of sales managers out of having to do a lot of work is they say things like, "Well, we sell with relationships and it's it's strategic." And uh, right. <laughs> you know, I'm uh, Bob is my you know he's my top rep, and uh, you know I, I just need ten Bobs because Bob has the Rolodex, right? Yeah. But we got Kelly at the bottom on the list who doesn't have the Rolodex, and she's sitting there saying, "Well, how do I get the relationships?" Yeah. So, the, the, the problem here is the, the manager is not giving them a structured process that allows them to get into conversations. Yeah. So that structured process really only takes three things. And this is like part of my consulting, by the way, that yep. always blows yep. people's mind. 
I don't come in and say, all right, here, we need this, this, this. We're going to do this, 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 this. I say, do we have a way to organize contacts? That would sales engagement platform, a CRM. Yeah. Okay, we have that. I need a lot of contacts and I need them to be as valid as humanly possible. Yeah. That's a whole, we can, we could talk about that for like five hours. Like the, <laughs> the struggle, yeah. I get it. It, it. There is a struggle, but as a sales manager, as a sales director, that is your job to go figure out how to get that big list of contacts. Yeah. Because without yeah. these two things, the third thing won't matter. The third thing is technology. We need technology to lower that effort and to increase the amount of conversations people have in a day. Because yep. if I call all day and I talk to one or two people, the, the mountain in my head that builds up in front of me doing it again tomorrow is exactly. insurmountable. So use technology, find the leads. You have to go get a lot of leads for people to talk to and organize them. And if you yep. skip one piece of the process, it's going to be disjointed and all over the place. I see, I see teams that just have the dialer and just a lead list. They throw it in there. And then they call the same person four times in a week, right? Or, yeah, exactly. You know, just disastrous. To. You need to organize your process. And you need to enable your reps to have a lot of conversations. And just in terms of like really, really broad kind of picture, how many, con- when you say you need a lot of kind of pre-qualified contacts, what's a kind of, what's a lot, do you think? What would be a good starting point as a database of people you're going to start trying to call and, and build some kind of rapport with? It's a good question. So I generally, like with, with my clients, I tell them, like I'm like, if the rep's going to start calling on Monday, I need them to have 200 callable numbers in a list. And that right. list needs to be monothematic. What does that mean? That means everybody in this list has something in common. Yeah. And that is what I'm going to base my script on. Yeah. Is what they care about. Right. This other old school methodology is like, I need to look at Mike's LinkedIn. I need to look at his Twitter. I need to read the, the S1 of his company. I need to, I need to, dude, no. Like you need to go have a conversation about their business in a curious right. fashion with a point of view on how you might solve a problem yeah. in their business. But you don't need to know anything about it. You don't need to personalize all this, right? You should let your personality come out through the call. And we, we get into personal conversations, but that that problem holds a lot of people back. So you need at least 200 callable numbers. And then how this works is you should have 200 callable numbers, but you should also be ready to replace, you know, yeah. 30, anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 leads a week to keep exactly. that pool of 200 ready. Because if you're calling that lead list every day, you're going to bump into people. I'm going to talk yeah. to a guy like, you know, the first Mike who I'm you're not right. calling you back. Yeah, exactly. So you're out of my lead list, right? <laughs> I'm going to set meetings. They're out of my lead list. You need to be able to replenish that. So that's all you really need to have um, a solid amount of conversations every day, as long as you're using a dialer. The dialer is the piece that takes time and condenses it. And the beautiful part about that is like sales is time. We all get paid to do X amount of work in X amount of time and to get X outcome in X amount of time. Dialers condense time. Every sales team is using a dialer. Just top of the head kind of numbers. For every 100 people that you actually get through to, and they don't do the, the first mic, they actually kind of have a conversation. Roughly, out of 100 initial conversations, roughly how many follow-up calls should people be aiming for out of 100? Just a simple follow-up call. Yeah, I mean, we got a, there's a lot of variables here. There's yeah, a lot yeah. Of variables. huge number. This is really top of the head. Yeah, really top of the head. It really matters company to company, market to market. but. I would say in general, if you're doing it right, meaning you have this conversational style, we yep. should get about 20% of the people that are somewhat interested. Now that okay. could mean, hey, yeah, that sounds interesting. I got to go send me an email. Look, yep. Send them an email and call them back in two days. That is a yep. warm follow-up. Or yeah. it could mean you know various levels of interest. Yeah, actually, we have a project going around this, and I don't want to set a, a meeting yet. Send me your information. I want to learn more about this. Yeah, really warm follow up, and then that also includes meetings set. So I'd yeah. say about twenty percent of your connected calls, connected to the calls, right correct, people, to the exactly. right people, should result in something positive. Now, the meeting set rate in itself is is different. I elite reps will be around seven. Seven to ten percent of their connected calls will turn into 
to actual sales meetings. So right. Good top Brilliant. of you know, just top of the top of the head numbers, not yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Don't, don't Kevin, quote me on this. <laughs> it's been fantastic. Genuinely, I uh, uh, I love podcasting because I meet new people. We didn't know each other before. I've now met you. I know what you do. You've educated me. I've learned something new. Um, we we've had a conversation. I've got someone new in the states that when I'm in the states next, I can go along and have a conversation with. So it's been amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Awesome. Well, Mike, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. It, it's been a great time, and uh, I hope everyone out there gets the courage to go pick up the phone and talk to a stranger. Exactly. And now you've got a, you've got a way of doing it as well now, so there's no need to be scared. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Anyone listening, if you've loved this episode, please could you subscribe uh, to the podcast? It really helps, uh, and give it a review. That'd be great. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to listen. Uh, look forward to you um, hearing about us next time. All right, Kevin, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Higgle, the B2B sales club podcast series with your host, Mike Lander. Please subscribe so that you'll catch all the next episodes.